Hi everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so grateful that you're here. Today I'm going to talk about some comments and questions I've gotten on some of my recent videos. Sometimes I just can't give a full answer in the reply. So I thought more people might be interested in it this way. Plus, at the end, I'm going to do a little book recommendation on books about Malaysia. Sound good? Stay tuned! Hi, my name's Taylor, and I'm an American expat living in Malaysia, and I like to share my life and travels with you. As I said, today I'm going to go over some questions I've gotten and comments on recent videos. I've done this once before and it was kind of fun. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, this first group of comments and questions is about my M-City video about the building that I live in. So they're sort of real estate related. First question, and it's from VM. Hi Taylor, congrats on the subscriber milestone. Who cleans your condo? If you hire someone, how much do you pay for one cleaning? Do they clean the whole condo or just the living area? Do you use the AC all year? In other words, is it humid all year or you get to turn off the AC from November to January? Huh, well, VM, this is so easy. I'll start with the second part of your question first. Yes, the AC is on year round here. There is no cooler months here in Malaysia, unfortunately, like in Florida. As to who cleans my condo, I have a lovely woman who comes in every two weeks, that's all. I find that's enough. And she does a great job and spends about three hours here, sometimes a little more. And I pay her a hundred ringgit or around $25. Hope that answers your question. Okay, next question. This is from Eric G. Great video, Taylor. Thank you. Do units like that come furnished by chance? I have yet to visit Malaysia, but hope to visit in the next year or two to help line up future plans. Well, yes, Eric, almost all rentals I've come across are usually furnished. I'm not sure why, but they are. Mine, however, was not. And a cost difference is usually just a few hundred ringgit, you know, between $75 and $100 more to get a furnished unit. Hope that helps answer your question. Okay, the next question. This is from Get Smart Paul. Hi, Andrew. Did you mention how much a comparable unit like yours would cost to buy versus the $410 US rent? As you know, expats who want to buy real estate must purchase real estate with a minimum price of 1 million ringgit or $230,000 US. Yes, Paul, I think that's right. At least with MM2H, I think you're required to purchase property that's over a million ringgit. So, that would rule out where I live, that's for sure. For instance, my unit, the Soho units in the M-City, you can get, I've seen, for as low as 580,000 ringgit, which isn't bad, it's less than $150,000. I think that's great. If you want an entry-level studio, I've seen those as low as 465,000 ringgit, or just a little over 100,000. Hope that helps answer your question. Okay, next question, and this is from Savitri. Taylor, inquiring minds would like to know, if you were not living at M-City currently, would you move there now? Is the building well maintained? Are there any odors or insects because of the many areas of water and greenery? Good question, Savitri. Well, yes, I think I would move here. After living here over a year now, I really like it. It's beautifully maintained, much more so than other places I've lived. I mean, they're out there in the halls every morning, mopping every hall and every floor of the 36 floors. The trash rooms are kept immaculate. There's no really funny odors. Now, as I've mentioned before, there are plumbing issues as almost every building in Malaysia. Like not too long ago, there was this plumbing leak out in the hall. I mean, it wasn't getting water on the floor, but the wall was getting like sort of mildew looking and stuff. Well, I think within two weeks that was repaired and fixed and painted. So I think they do a great job maintaining the building. Insects are another problem I think I've mentioned too. When I moved in here, there was a slight roach problem, but I found an exterminator who for 50 ringgit a month sprays. So that's great, no roaches anymore. So 
hope that answers your question. Okay, next question, and it's from Jock or Jackie, I'm not sure which. I'm interested in living there in M City. How do I find out about what units are available? Well, that's simple enough. You certainly don't go to the management office, that's for sure, they wouldn't know, although they might have some information on it. Go to propertyguru.com. I'll put the link up here, one side or the other, I can't tell. So, <laughs> but propertyguru.com is a good place to start. Now, most of the units are not gonna be available for some reason, it's sort of bait and switch, I think, with a lot of real estate here. But if you contact with a realtor that you like, they're gonna be able to show you exactly what's available in M-City. And M-City has over 1,600 units. So there's always many, many for rent. Hope that helps. Okay, now I'm gonna go on to the Florida versus Malaysia. Will I return to the US video? Which, thank you very much, has become my second most popular video of all time with now over 90,000 views. Go figure. Anyway, this question is from Dr. Pepper. I grew up in Florida. Also, I'm retired now and would love to get away to a nice country to live out my last days. With Social Security and my VA disability, I take home $5,200 a month. Based on what you say your cost, living costs are there in Malaysia, I think I could do pretty well. I was looking at Japan, but prices and inflation there are starting to worry me. I think I need to book a flight to check out Malaysia. Cheers. Well, yes, Dr. Pepper, you could live quite well on $5,200 a month. That's over 20,000 ringgit a month. Amazing amount of money. You could live very, very well. I do it for less than $2,000 a month or around $2,000 a month. But the problem is with the MM2H visa right now. Unbelievably, that income is not enough for the new visa requirements. I'm hoping so much that they're gonna change so soon because when I did it, it was only required 10,000 ringgit a month or about $2,500. Now they want 40,000 ringgit a month or close to $10,000. So fingers crossed, let's hope they change it soon. Okay, this is more of a comment. It's from Brandenburg. Food is very affordable in Malaysia. If you don't wish to cook, then eating outside will not blow your living budget. A plate of the more luxurious nasi kandar rice with a whole piece of chicken, a vegetable, and an egg, or soya curd, plus a glass of tea will cost you about 15 ringgit. Even if you were to eat this meal three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that would not cost you more than 50 ringgit, which is equivalent to about $12 US in food costs. Yes, Brandenburg, Food is very, very affordable here. It's one of the only places I've ever lived where it seems actually less expensive to eat out, especially if you go to places like a Mama, where they're gonna have much better priced food. Now, if you go to a more upscale restaurant, you're gonna spend more like mm, $25 or more a day. So thanks for that tip. This one's from Mike Fa, and again, it's more of a comment than a question. You look very healthy for your age and probably have more energy than you know what to do with each day. Have you ever considered selling your condo in Florida and investing that money to open a business in Malaysia with a partner so that you have something to keep you physically and mentally active each day? Most expats retire in foreign countries and just live day to day waiting for their number to be called, which is quite a shame when they still have so much to offer to the community they live in. Well, Mike, thanks. Thanks for the tip. But honestly, I am so busy with my YouTube channel, I don't need any other interests. Now, if you're on the MM2H visa, you are permitted to start a business and employ people, Malaysians. So that's always a possibility and a good idea for some people. But I'm way past wanting to work that hard. I work hard enough with YouTube. But thanks for your comment. Here's another question from Keith Wilsey. Hi, Taylor. I've been watching your video as I'm on my way to retire to Malaysia. Concerning Medicare as an expat, does the U.S. government still require to buy Medicaid, which is a supplement? I appreciate all you do. Well, thanks, Keith. I appreciate you watching my channel. As a retiree from the U.S., you're still eligible for Medicare at 65 years old. 
and you pay nothing for that. And theoretically, I could still go back to the U.S. and have some health care done there. But considering how expensive it would be to fly back, it's probably cheaper for me to take care of it here out of pocket. But the other question, does the U.S. government still require you to buy Medicaid? No, they do not. I think that's Part B, Medicare Part B. And I think that's what he's referring to. Anyway, I could have bought it. It's about $165 a month, but I would have no use for it here. So they let you waive that if you don't live in the country. And then if you go back to the U.S., you can pick it up, but you're going to pay a penalty of 10% a year of every year you didn't take it. Hope that helps answer your question. Okay, this question's from Mike F. Mr. Taylor, thank you for a very informative video. I was curious, can you still collect your Social Security in Malaysia? What happens to your Medicare? Just curious. Well, as I just said, I've already explained about the Medicare in the last question. But about Social Security, you can still collect Social Security. You don't have to live in the U.S. to collect it. Now, I'm not sure they'll send it to you in Malaysia. I've never tried to have them do it. I have them direct deposit into my U.S. account, and then I wire it to Malaysia. It's really no trouble at all. Thanks for that question. Okay, this is sort of a funny comment. I'll let you all be the judge. It's from Lim K.S. Hi, Taylor. Has anyone say you look a lot like the Sultan of Johor? Actually, a couple other viewers have said I look like the Sultan of Johor. I'll let you guys be the judge. I'll put the picture up here somewhere. See what you think. This question's from Lauren Angela, my friend in Malacca. Hey, Taylor. Have you made a video comparing Penang and KL? I think it would do well. Well, Lauren, funny you should mention that because that's going to be my next video after this. Now, I'll be going to Penang soon with my sister, although the video is going to be done before that. But I really am interested to give you all my opinion on which I prefer to live in. Is it Penang or KL? Most of you probably know the answer, but you can wait for that video anyway and see what I have to say. I'm going to do a deep comparison. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about books written about Malaysia. Now, I read this first book before I moved here, and boy, did it intrigue me about Malaysia. It's called The Gift of Rain by Tan Tuan Ng. I think it's Ng, or maybe it's Ang. Probably Ang, actually. Tan Tuan Ong. Anyway, it's a marvelous historical fiction that takes place in Penang. And I think if you're interested in moving to Malaysia, or to Penang especially, you would really enjoy this book. I've also read his second book, which is The Garden of Evening Mists. It's marvelous too. And it takes place in the highlands, in the mountain areas, during World War II. Very, very interesting book. And it's been made into a movie too, which was fabulous. So if you're interested in that, I'd suggest you pick this book up too. Now the author of these books is not paying me to promote them. But I just think he's such a fabulous author that I want to promote his books. Even if the Malaysians haven't read them, they should, because they're really good. His brand new book, which I've highlighted in the community section of my channel, is The House of Doors. Now, I haven't read this one yet. It just came the other day, and I'm trying to finish another book first. But I am definitely going to read this as soon as I can. And I'm sure it's going to be just as good as his other two. I think it's been over 10 years since he's published a book, so his fans are anxiously awaiting this one. You better get your hands on it. So I also had a comment from Sean Chim saying, The Garden of Evening Mists is also a fantastic book. Yes, I agree. Apart from Tan Tuan Ong, the other Malaysian author I would recommend is Tash Ah. Well, I had never heard of Tash Ah, so thank you very much for this recommendation. I looked it up and he has several books. The first one being The Harmony Silk Factory. I'm going to get that next. Now that was his first book. So I'm going to start with that. I always like to start with an author's first book and then I usually, if I love it, I read every book they've written. And I believe his second book was Map of the Invisible World which sounds fascinating too. So if any of my readers have read either of those books or any of his books, let me know in the comments. 
because I'm fascinated to find out if you liked them, or any of the Tan Tuan Ong books, too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little question and answer section today. It's fun to do, and I'm going to do more of them, because it's harder and harder for me to answer all the questions now that my channel is growing. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and click the notification bell, too, so you won't miss any of my videos. I appreciate you all so much, and making my channel grow so much recently has just been just so heartwarming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, that's all I have for today. You can look forward to videos with my sister during her visit, and then the one coming up about Penang versus KL. And I'm sure I'll do something on the Cameron Highlands because I'm going there with my sister. So thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.